Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and while I'm a lover not a fighter in real life, I'm basically the complete opposite when it comes to video games. Which brings us to the topic of today, drawing weapons. A lot of you guys want to make your own stories or video games, and that probably means you're going to want to learn how to draw a weapon. And I don't mean draw like when they call draw, like when they're doing a duel, I mean like actually draw it. PUBG Mobile is the sponsor of today's video, so I thought it would be a perfect time to talk about how bad I am, or at least was, at drawing guns. So I'll start with the don't side and show you how I used to do it. How I used to draw it was like two rectangles sort of in an L shape and everything else was just sort of sticking out of it. Um, I, the worst part I think about how I used to draw guns is the safety. It kind of just looks like a pull tab on like a soda can. It's completely non-convincing. I mean, these kind of things, like you can tell what it's supposed to be. It just doesn't look very satisfying. It's very like soft looking um, and it definitely looks like the weakest part of the drawing by far. Um, I wish I was joking about how bad that safety is. Um, um, but like, that's not even exaggeration. That's literally how I used to draw guns. The trick is with these complicated props. Um, it's all in the details. So I highly recommend getting references. It's completely vital. Um, basically for this one, I'm using a reference I actually pulled from PUBG. Um, it's really helpful because it's a video game. So obviously they have all these great 3D models of all the weapons. So it's actually really useful if you're looking for a reference on specific weapons. And of course, all of the weapons in the game are like based on real guns that actually could work in real life. Um, whereas when I was drawing guns from my head, they're probably missing like 80% of what you'd need to actually like fire a bullet out of it. So um, it's really helpful to look at something that has actually been thought through all the way. Another thing that I recommend doing is using this sort of color blocking technique to uh, get the rough silhouette out. Um, so this particular gun that I'm drawing is called the R45. Um, it's a handgun and it has this cool sort of like uh, bump at the nose of it that I think makes it look distinctive. Um, that's another thing you want to think about. Every single thing in your drawing should have personality of some kind. Um, you don't want your character to be the only thing with personality and then leave all the props and the backgrounds to be sort of just generic um, because if you do that it will kind of kill the whole image. Um, you need to put that kind of love into every piece of it and then it's going to make it really pop and be really dynamic. Thinking about things in a practical way is a really good way to avoid forgetting important details about whatever you're drawing. And even if you're drawing a gun that doesn't really exist, knowing the fundamental like core pieces that a real world gun would need to work will help you sort of design your own um, in a way that could potentially maybe work. So drawing some real weapons with a lot of love and attention to detail will basically make you better at not only drawing those real weapons, but also drawing things from your own imagination later on. So even if you have more of a fantastical story or something sci-fi where you're trying to make something that doesn't really exist, knowing the fundamentals of how something works in real life is going to help you with that. At the end of this video, I'm actually creating my own fantastical weapon um, out of this gun and another one from PUBG that I've sort of smashed together and added stuff on top of just to show you how that works. You'll be surprised at how easy and quick it is to improve when you just use some references. I was honestly shocked. On to a more large and complicated gun. Now this is something I usually wouldn't even try and this is obviously the don't side I'm starting off with first just like the last one. Um, basically I have no idea. I tried to do this without a reference which again is kind of the main point of the video. If you want to draw a complicated prop you need some kind of reference to help you along your way. Um, so this was my best attempt at drawing a sniper rifle from my imagination. Even though I play a lot of games with guns in them I really Really, really had no mental picture in my mind of how they work other than knowing that they're longer than a normal gun and that they have a scope at the top. Another big problem with this one, which I wasn't even intentionally trying to involve in the video, but I'm glad that I sort of organically brought up, is that if there is ever a time to use the line tool um, when you're drawing something like this is the perfect time. As you can see in my uh, sort of sniper rifle abomination that I drew on the don't side, it's curving a lot. And realistically, that would quite mess up the trajectory of a bullet going through it. Um, so I highly recommend using straight lines as your sort of guide when it comes to building a um, weapon like this, especially if you're going for something more realistic. 
So the reference I'm using for this one is the AWM from, again, PUBG Mobile, obviously. Um, it has a prominent scope on the top and it also just has a really good shape, so I felt like it was the one that I wanted to draw. Like I said before, uh, the straight line tool is going to be your friend here, so I'm basically using it anytime there's a long stretch of straight line that I have to draw. Um, it takes a little bit longer than drawing it freehand, but you'll find that it makes all the difference in the end because those sort of sharp straight angular lines really sell that this is like a real detailed prop um, not you know something that you're really bad at drawing like mostly when I draw guns uh, without a reference um, they honestly just look like weird toys that have like melted in the sun a little bit um, which doesn't really give the sort of uh, intense deadly impression that we probably want if we're going to all the bother of drawing a gun in our illustration or story. This was most also interesting because I usually assume in my mind that guns are just 100% metal, but this one appeared to be made out of partially plastic and partially metal, and those two different textures sort of contrasting each other made it look a lot more convincing. Um, and just having a big high contrast difference in the weapons that you're drawing are also going to make each individual piece stand out better um, from itself so it doesn't just form into sort of like a grayish mass like the one that I drew from first on the don't side. Um, so that's another thing that you should definitely consider. Uh, obviously they're not going to be crazy colorful, but having some color differences and lightness and darkness is going to really help you um, make a more interesting looking complex weapon. Lastly, my favorite part, creating your own like fantastical or original gun or weapon. Now, what I used to do, of course, like drawing any other type of gun, I basically wouldn't use any references, and I especially justified this to myself because I was like, oh, this is my own invention, so I don't really need a reference. But as you can see shortly as I'm doing the don't side right now, um, it just kind of looks strange and awkward, like a weird decoration. Um, I really I really don't think that with my limited knowledge of how weaponry works and things like that, that it's very easy to come up with something that looks convincing and cool when you don't have any references or anything to sort of pull from. I already discovered that with the limited amount of practice that I have just working on this video, my ability to come up with interesting weapons out of my own head drastically increased. So I really encourage you guys to try this yourself. Um, it made such a difference. And of course this is true of any prop, whether you're making a sword, or a gun, or a shield, or a mace, or a cauldron. Um, as long as you're looking at lots of different real world examples, you're going to have a better time coming up with something cool and interesting on your own. And that's definitely what I experienced when I worked on this. Um, basically I wanted to combine the AWM's scope onto the R45's general body, um, and I wanted to try to make a very interestingly sort of shaped weapon that would look really cool and magical with this very real world foundation to see if that would end up with a more um, cool looking and more fun fantastical weapon because I had a feeling that if I based it off of the skeleton of these real weapons it would actually make the fantastical weapon look a lot cooler. Um, so the first thing that I did was that I just snipped off parts of the AWM that I liked, mostly the scope as you can see. Um, I really liked the idea of this big clunky scope on top of a pistol, I thought that was kind of cute and interesting, and I decided for some decorations on it, instead of having those little screws that hold the gun together in real life, I replaced with this sort of constellation looking stars and little rivets throughout the gun. I tried to stick to some of the core ideas of the original weaponry, but I changed a few things out, like where the bullets go in on the revolver part, I decided to do this weird little like uh, liquid chamber. I thought that made it look more interesting. I also decided at the end of the scope I would have like this gem sticking out of it. I thought that gave it a real fantastical look and it's still kind of clear so it's like a kaleidoscope scope. Um, I thought that would be really interesting and kind of cool. Um, it definitely makes it look more like some sort of magical weapon. Um, I also just added some parts that I wanted to uh, experiment with so I made the part where she'd look through the scope as well as the trigger cushion 
mind um, because I thought it would add this sort of weird softness to this like scary weapon. Um, I think that sort of juxtaposition makes it for a really interesting sort of thing. Honestly, this is such a more complicated, um, fantastical weapon than I ever could have drawn without any help. Um, and I was really surprised at how much I liked it. Um, I find that when you have a simple cartoony style like mine, uh, if you're able to do a very complex background and do very detailed props, it can make your art look really, really fancy and cool. And it makes the simplicity of your characters more obviously a style choice rather than people thinking that you can't do more detailed work. It's just kind of a nice juxtaposition. Um, sorry, I'm using the word juxtaposition so much. It's, uh, it's just relevant, okay? <laughs> um, so for the coloring, I decided to stick with really two main colors. I wanted the light parts to be this sort of bluish sky blue cyan kind of color. And then the other parts I wanted to be a sort of more muted purpley. Um, I didn't want to go so hard on the colors like I did in the other one because I realized that that sort of shrieking pink color was actually a little bit obnoxious. Um, so I decided to dial it back and I added a sort of fuzzy glow on all of the blue parts. I thought it made it look really special. Honestly, it's shocking to me that I was able to add this much nonsense to this weapon and still have it look like it has real weight and the potential to actually fire. Um, when you compare it to the don't side, which just honestly looks like a melted toy, um, it makes me really realize how important it is to have a skeleton of something real underneath your fantasy creations. Huge thanks to PUBG Mobile for sponsoring this video. It really got me outside of my comfort zone and trying something that I never really took the time to learn how to do properly. Check the link in the description if you want to play the game for yourself. And the Royale Battle Pass number 6 is out, so definitely check that out as well. Thank you so much for staying all the way to the end. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to try and make a tutorial on. I will do my best. And um, until then, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you to all of my patrons, including Bella Story, Blue Boy, Calpum, Pong, Caramel TV, Clockwork Construct, Dionysus, Hadrilis, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Album, Hope Chelsea, Imagine Creations, JJ Jade, Joseph Copel, Carla Tapia, Katie Marigold, Kira Dirt, Le Bla Bla Bla, Megan Claire, Midnight Doodles, Micah Dactyl, Musa Dear Rachel, Nora Cornelson, Okamore, Ollie, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, Tony and Tube, The Artsy Moose, Tyler, Your Boy ST, and Zoe Sardust.